let's go back let's go back a little bit to uh, the idea of types uh, within variables and again this is a very c sharp specific thing that we need to take care of in c sharp because it's a strongly typed language it means that we always have to be very specific about the type of all the data that we work with which is not something that happens in other programming languages um, but uh, we have to be very mindful because as good as it is to have a strongly typed language because it's much faster and is way less error prone for many reasons at the beginning sometimes um, it might be difficult to keep track of types and we will run into a lot of issues where um, we forget to assign the right type of data to the right type of variable uh, or we forget to um, to make explicit conversions between data so for example uh, if I declare a variable called of the type integer that I call a and um, I assign the value of 10 that is going to be fine but if I were to mistakenly assign the value of 10.45 you would see that I would be getting an error and saying that I cannot store a double inside of a integer right that is because um, it's two different data types uh, same thing for example if I have a boolean and I say boolean um, is professor or something and I type here the value of 1002 this is not going to work because I need to have a value of the type true or the type false correct same for a string if I type if I if I say the message is going to be blah 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 then this is probably not going to work either because this has to be a string as opposed to a number so the, the way to convert this would be something like this all right so we need to be very mindful about making sure that information of the right type goes into variables of the right type okay however um, there is a tiny bit of flexibility within um, within mixing different data types there is first of all there are some data types that are um, that could be thought as a simpler or as a more um, yeah let's say simpler data type than other data types so for example something that I can do is uh, if I declare a double called num I can actually store a value with no decimal part inside of it because if you think about the if you think about integers as a subset of the more general category of numbers with decimal parts integers are actually numbers where the decimal part is zero so I can actually without any problems store inside of num I can store a value that doesn't have any um, at any that doesn't have any decimal part um, remember how I said that we had chars as a data type and chars were uh, characters with only one letter in I can create a variable called letter of the type string and here I can store uh, for example the letter a right I can store a string of text that only contains one letter the only thing that I need to keep in mind is that for chars we did use single quotes for here we cannot use single quotes we have to use double quotes all right um, and I believe there is some flexibility also for other things so for example if I say uh, if I store the value of true no so this is not going to work so forget never mind about that all right so th there are some implicit conversions implicit conversions and um, depending on which environment you're working with this may also actually apply to uh, other types of data so for example if you're working in an environment that has geometry types very commonly you can store points inside of vector objects and you can store vectors inside of points as well because at the end of the day points and vectors are the exact same thing they are uh, an object with three numbers right so very often those environments let you mix um, those data types together whenever a an implicit conversion like this one is not possible sometimes we can force that convention that conversion between different types so for example um, there is a technique that is called casting and what that means is that for example I can have an integer here and I'm going to declare something called b and here I cannot store the value of 23.455 however 
I can add here uh, at the beginning, I can add this clause here, which is whatever you have here, can you please force convert it to an integer? And I do that by opening and closing parentheses and writing inside of those parentheses the type that I want to cast this information to. And because of the order of uh, assignment, remember that what happens here is that uh, this part of the code gets executed first and whatever the result of this is, it becomes stored inside of B. And now what do you think is going to be, what do you think is going to be stored inside of the value of B now? If I were to run this code, what do you think I would, I would have? I'm going to give you three seconds while I type this. Three, two, one, let's go. You can see that the computer is doing a conversion where it is rounding the value of 23, uh, rounding the value down, all right? So it's basically removing all the decimal part. Let's take, let's make another experiment. What if the rounding was something like this? Would this round the value automatically to uh, 24? We can see that it doesn't. What it does is when a number is converted to an integer, basically the whole decimal part is trimmed off. So it's very different from rounding a number. This is how casting to integers in uh, C sharp works. All right. Um, <clears throat> so this is a common technique, um, of, for example, and just like I was doing before, C, let's say that I want to cast uh, the value of true to an integer. This doesn't work either. Um, so I take this back. All right. <laughs> Another way in C sharp that we can force convert uh, values between them is with uh, an explicit conversion. And that is in C sharp, we have the convert object that allows to, um, that always tries to find the best conversion between two different uh, objects. So for example, let's say that I had here in C is going to be convert to int 32, all right? Uh, some value. So for example, the value of true, all right, which is what I was trying to do before. And then if I were to print to the console C, what do you think the value of true converted to an integer is going to give me? Three seconds. Boom. <laughs> I believe it's going to be the number one. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes. So, um, because Boolean values, because Boolean values only have two uh, values, false and true, they actually correspond with binary logic. And if you're familiar with binary representations of numbers, in binary, you can only write zeros and ones. So zeros equal false and ones equal true. So that's why converting true to an integer gives you the value of one. Um, same thing, for example, um, if I were to convert, uh, I don't know, for example, let, it's a very common operation is to say, you may be reading from a file, number from file. So for example, if you have a CSV file, CSV files are text files. Uh, so you may actually be reading um, uh, a number like this, so it, this is actually an integer number, but because it is with double quotes, it shows up as a text. So something very common to convert a, a string that actually only contain digits. Uh, a very common way of doing that is by using, for example, by, by using, by using, um, why is this not working? Oh, sorry. Yeah, because I need, you see, that is, uh, that is part of, um, of, of mixing things. This is going to give me a double and I was trying to store that double inside of an integer. So this should be a double here now. And then now, uh, on the console, oops, I'm going to write line. I'm going to go number from file. All right. And if I do this, you can see that now, this object, which used to be a string, 
even though it looks like a number, but it is a string because it's in double quotes, now gets converted to a number with decimal part. This is a super, super common operation where we're reading data from, from files or from databases, etc., uh, etc. Et not from databases so much, but um, you get the point. Okay. And last but not least, um, there, another very common operation is the other way around, converting things to strings. All right. Very often you will need to convert, to be able to convert anything into a string to, for example, print it to the console, write it in a file, etc., etc. So something that is very common in C Sharp is that, um, for example, um, number as string. So let's say that I have this number here and that I want to convert it to a string because I want to save it to a file. Every object in C Sharp and that includes primitives, and that includes com, um, classes, objects, structs, etc. They all, if I type dot and I type to string, every object has a method called to string that allows to convert this into a, st a, a string representation of this value. So if I were now to, to print this, you will see that the result of printing this to the console is going to be that number as a string here. All right. And um, that's it. Um, so as you can see, C sharp is strongly typed. So we always have to store the right data inside of the right variable with that data type. However, there are some options for converting data between different types, either by doing implicit conversions, if the types are types that match, because one is a simpler version of the other, either by casting, which is sometimes allows you to do this, sometimes uh, you cannot do, either by using explicit conversions, using the convert object, just as I explained here. And sometimes, specifically for the case of strings, you will always, always, always be able to use the to string method of any particular object or a particular value to convert that to a string for doing things such as, for example, printing it to the console or uh, saving it as a, on, a, on a text file.